Hello, today I'll be looking at this charger from Hobbymate, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you don't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can fly that little bell icon, click on it, it'll tell you when I'm uploading videos. So Hobbymate, um, Hobbymate, I reviewed one charger before, it's called the D6 Geo Pro, it's actually sort of my daily charger, really, really efficient and fast, so I use this dual charger rather than use my old Quattro charge it does four batteries at a time because this will generally outperform it and it's that quick this was very good the only problem was it came at a bit of a price like 120 odd dollars at the time which is quite a lot for a charger even a duo but no worries because this is a single charger so it's bound to be different it's the same price why is it the same price why is it expensive i don't know i guess we'll look and we'll find out must be very luxurious anyway i'll show you what's in the box you get some instructions, a power cord, this is a UK plug, I guess they're sending plugs out depending where you live, and the charger itself, which is a big chunky old block. It looks like this, almost a touchscreen type interface. Uh, USB on the side there for charging, balance port, you've got USB output for charging USB. You've got regenerative charging here, so you can put a, um, another USB battery in and take the power there. There's another USB slot there, I'm guessing that's for firmware updating, and you've got a servo port here for some reason. Big fan in the side. Can't see it very well like this, can we? It's all sort of black and reflective. So let's go into close up, we'll plug it in, and we'll see exactly what it can do. Okay, so here's the little charger. Let's plug it in and see what happens. And full disclosure, I'd actually already filmed this, um, and there were a few functions I didn't know how to use, and I couldn't find any manual, and I ended up emailing hobby mate and they sent me the manual which wasn't online i thought it would be online by now it's still not there i'll have a word with them see if we can make it there because it's a pretty good manual 30 something odd pages and it tells you quite a lot of useful stuff but i thought rather than sort of edit the thing where i'm sort of not understanding some of the functions probably i'll do it again and we'll go through it so here's your basic uh charger here's the display it's a nice bright display i've got two lights going down this which are really bright and normally this will wipe out stuff but you can actually see this um long press and it will take us to the settings uh things like task parameters i'm not going to go through all of these because there's just too many system parameters one interesting thing here is the regen discharge so i've set this up to sort of demo it on a forest battery so i changed the max voltage to uh, 16.8 volts uh, then we've got max input power lcd backlights high what i will do is turn the volume off because i know how much people get annoyed by listening to this thing beep all the time and you can change what it's called so i've called this carry k and you'll be able to see that written above here when we do it Tools I'll go into in a second. Uh, some of the rest of it's pretty obvious. The calibration, system self-check, factory settings, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a system info where it will tell you exactly what um, software on. As mentioned, there is a specific port right here. This USB port is specifically for updating the firmware if they happen to update that. So if we go back to here, uh, you will see that's our, that's our little device name there, the carry cam. I'm just going to zoom in just a touch. So let's plug a battery in and we'll talk about what we've got going on. So it's done so the balance charge is got the ground on the left there and it's XT60. It's XT60 only, it doesn't come with any adapters. So if you've got other types of batteries, you'll have to make yourself some sort of, here's one I've made for my fat sharks. Here's one I made for charging XT30s. Here's one I char uh, made for charging uh, JSTs. Uh, shame they didn't include any box. Uh, and you see there, when we plug it in, we are shown how many cells, essentially, with the voltage in each cell, the overall voltage there. If we press the down button, we get input voltage here, our operating temperature, uh, how many uh, watt hours we're putting in, and how many times this has been charged. So if we go to the charge menu, first off, as with many of these things, aside from LiPos, you can do uh, high voltage LiPos, Lions, Life, or LIXXs, NIZN, NICAD, I actually get that one, NIMH, any loops. So uh, quite a range of batteries there. And we've got something we're going to, we've got smart battery as well. So we'll do LiPo here just to show you what's going on. 
and uh, well you can see I've probably set this up before first thing it does it recognizes how many cells you've got which is handy you can change your cell voltage you want and obviously you can change exactly how many amps you want to charge at this I've done before so it's a 1.3 amp battery and we can simply say start task there now I've had this a little while and I've already done a bunch of batteries with it um, and it's pretty good pretty fast what it does is it charges up, it does a fast charge first and when the batteries get within 20 milliamps um, of what they should be after that it does a balanced charge and that gets things within 10 milliamps of where it should be and at that point it, it says it's done charges is done and good so as you see that is now charging at 1.3 amps this is how many milliamp hours it's put in this is the amount of watts it's using there's your overall voltage cell voltages again and after a few minutes what you get is the internal resistance measurement here now these are all over 10 which depending how accurate internal resistance is over 10 is is not so good but i tend to use internal resistance measurement on charges as a comparison it's like is this any good yes it is what's the internal resistance and i sort of take that as my my figure and if there's a bad battery i have a look at this and i see what it is and if it's over a certain thing I think well that's that's bad these are a bit long in the tooth now one of these is particularly bad I'll have to plug the other one and see which is worse uh, but these are at least it's consistent I guess and as said before input voltage operating temperature the amount of wires going in and how many times this has been charged I don't know if this can actually properly recognize a regular battery to find out how many times it's been charged or not it seems to be trying in some way and you can basically adjust the current mid stream on this if you want to and obviously here I'm going to just stop that just to show some of the other stuff uh, you'll get quite used to the, the colors it changes so you know um, what's happening depending on the color so when it goes into fast charges finish it changes color again it's quite easy to see what's going on so some people get a little bit confused with the fact you've got charge and then you've got a balance down there so the charge actually does do a balance balance charge is a bit of a weird thing where you can basically say I want to balance my cell voltage at a specific voltage uh, normally you'd think about you know charging this up fully but if you want to balance this at a specific voltage which is not fully charged uh, that's what you can do there it's a bit of a weird one so the other things you've got is discharge with the internal discharge you can set it at up to five amps but depending on how many cells you've got in the battery is how much it will take so this can internally discharge at 30 watts which in this case is about 1.3 amps on a 4s depending on how many cells you've got uh, it's going to depend exactly how many amps that will pull see the, the fans is coming now it's pretty loud um, it's not outrageous but you can certainly hear it and even if I turn it off it's it's still going to carry on now there are two other discharges here the first one is called external discharge and this is what I really didn't get and this is where the manual made things easier if you're going to do an external discharge your battery would go in the input socket here which would normally be power and then to the normally the output circuit you'd attach a high load resistor and basically all that um, discharge would come out as heat into that resistor I haven't got one um, but I'm glad it was documented in the instructions because I was very confused between external discharge and regen discharge. Regen discharge is a little bit more obvious. Basically, you take a big battery. Now, something like a massive 6S would uh, be where you'd want to go with this. And you'd plug that in the back. Then you'd plug in your regular battery to the discharge port or charge port. Uh, and basically we can then say we'd like to discharge this and we can then go up to quite a high rating so if we said I want to discharge this at 20 amps or 19 amps because I can't be bothered to press it anymore that will go on there and it's basically going to suck the power out of this battery push it into that battery and that is going at the moment at that five six it's going up nine and you can see this battery was on storage so it's not particularly happy with the fact i'm pulling this much out of it but you can really see this will discharge very quickly albeit you'll have to keep an eye on what this battery is i don't know if there's some sort of safety cutoff we've basically said i don't want any more than 16.8 volts going in there which after a few uh, about five of these you'd be up there um, i don't know if it suddenly says oh actually we've reached your limit 
Um, it's not something that's particularly uh, something I'm interested in. Generally speaking, I haven't ever got like a massive set of batteries discharged. I guess if you were a racer and you were out and you were doing, you know, your 20, 20 lipos and you had 10 left, then something like that would be quite useful. Dump it all into one battery. Um, what, yeah, I'm just slightly unsure about what happens when this battery gets full. I'm guessing it, it would cut off, but it doesn't actually mention it anywhere. And I didn't want to test it by saying, will this explode or not? So some of the other functions you got, and, and normally my way of discharging batteries is just go straight to storage. These things do seem pretty good at um, getting a decent speed to uh, do storage. Some of my other charges, I do notice they are very, very slow to do that last balance. I do, I do my storage very kindly. I do a 1C discharge rate and uh, off it goes on storage charge. Again, I've done uh, a few batteries through these. I know that it's pretty good and I've been using this one a long time and this is really nice and does do that uh, storage charge. And in fact, regular charge really quite nicely and pretty quick. So yeah, that's, that's coming up. Just gonna see where the fan kicks in. We're up to 39 degrees at the moment. Was it 40 degrees or something when it kicks in? Well, the fan's kicked in, it's still on 39 degrees. I don't know if it's a timer thing or what. But yeah, it is, it is quite noisy, it's noticeable. And you can see we're sort of coming up towards storage charge. We're at 3.79 on most, and we need to get to 3.8. And we're at storage done now in sort of four minutes, and the screen's gone green. You'll notice that it's still, it, it, nothing ever changes. It still shifts about a lot. It's still constantly looking at balance, and the cells kind of balance to each other all the time. And you will see them sort of dropping below and going back up again. It's a really weird sort of thing, but yeah, they never quite say stagnant, but... Yeah, essentially that's the storage charge done. So one of the other functions this had, uh, apart from the charge functions, is as a power supply. Uh, and if we go to power supply, we can basically set this from, I think it's from five volts, let's have a look. Yeah, from five volts all the way to 24 volts. And then you go and start and it will come out here. The, the only slight problem with this is you're just generally gonna need an adapter because most things you'd plug into that would be the sort of battery terminal type. So I've got this uh, little converter thing I made up. If I plug that in, I am gonna plug in as an example. This is my TS100 soldering iron. Uh, many of you will have these, they're very good. So if we start it off, I just wanna see how fast this will uh, heat up. Basically it's putting out 6S essentially. And you can see that gets up to temperature pretty damn quick if you put uh, 24 volts through it as a bench supply. And of course that's not gonna go dodgy because that's that's basically a power supply. But yep, that's up to the 380 degrees I normally use. But obviously testing out cameras or VTXs and stuff where you need five volts or 12 volts or something in between, that's pretty handy to have that as a, a desktop power supply. So earlier on, I showed you that there was a tool section if we go here. I'll show you a few of these, but I haven't got it sort of set up to do everything. So we've got in here uh, a servo type input. And if we were to connect up a receiver with a single uh, output on a PWM channel, we could go here and it would basically measure the graph of that PWM channel as we're moving things around. And then we've got a couple of servo tests. We've got a servo manual test. I'm just gonna plug this servo in. And as you can see that little blue text changing as I'm changing the amount of USEX going through the server like that, we can check our, our server usage out. More usefully though, because that's quite uh, annoying to try and do, there's an auto test as well. If we come out of that one, go into server auto test, and we're doing a low range speed at the moment. Mid high speed and we can change you know we can change the range so it goes from like 1500 to 2000 or whatever we like really but yeah just a, a simple little tool to test uh, a server out and finally we got a ppm out I, I don't know if there's a particular use for this if you've got something like a flight control that takes ppm you can basically go through each of the channels uh, and set exactly where you want it to be uh, helpfully enough, at least it sort of takes, or maybe channel freeze throttle, so it's got that all the way down. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I struggle to think where I might need that, but 
it is available for you. Finally, out the side here, as, as many of these things do, we've got a little USB port which will put out 2.1 amps. So if you want to, you can go ahead and charge your phone through there. Although this one had a wireless charge facility there. And like all these sorts of chargers, you don't have to run it off the mains, although it's quite useful for getting a lot of power through. If you've got a big battery, if you're at the field, you can plug it in there and you can charge small batteries with what would be probably a bigger battery than this. And then you've got more normal things like your voltage input would be uh, obviously to reflect that. Uh, and you'd be obviously restricted on the amount of amps and power you could put out depending on the size of your battery, but that is an option for you. So clearly quite a capable charger, does uh, some useful things. Um, the bench power supply is nice. The regenerative discharge is gonna be useful for some. It's got uh, a couple of little useful things it can do with the servo plug, not amazing. Um, my only problem is, aside from the price, it's currently the same price as this one and this seems to be better, well at least for me, because of the fact it's got dual chargers, I like the physical uh, rocker switch and switches, whereas I don't, I'm not a huge fan of these sort of touch controls. What this does do, which this one doesn't, which I didn't know, is the regenerative discharge. I thought this had regenerative discharge, but now I'd actually found where the manual was, um, it's still well hidden. Uh, it turns out this has just an, ex you'd have to fit an external load capacitor to it to do the discharge that way. I always thought this was regenerative. Glad I wasn't using it with a battery all that time, I guess. This does have that, and of course it has the bench power supply and some other things like that. Um, so it kind of depends what's important to you. They're both $109 at the moment, which is not particularly cheap. It seems reasonable-ish for this one. It seems a bit expensive for a single one. You can certainly charge and discharge at high power. It's fairly quick and it balances quite nicely. Really depends what you're after. For me, the Geo makes much more sense. Perhaps this is gonna be the choice for some people. Anyway, this has been the Hobbymate Speed H6 Smart Charger and was kindly supplied by Hobbycool for review. Thanks very much to them. And of course, you can find links down below for where you can check this out in more detail. Hope that's been helpful and I'll see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.